I am Erin Bradley, a teacher at Brian Evan Primary School in South Africa, Johannesburg. And we are having a computer lesson today, which is dealing with the encapsulation of code, putting the code into procedures using two logo, which is a tool in Purple Mash. I hope that you would find the lesson interesting as it explores lots of interesting aspects. Welcome to the 15th of October lesson and we are so pleased to see one of our great learners Andrew has returned we've wondered where he's been how wonderful to see you again listening means that you're using your ears connected to your brain and they send signals to your brain which gives your brain information that you can move your arms in very clever ways because your brain attached to your arms and your arms are like robots your arm is like a robotic arm Coded into your brain. Arms can move in a clever way. Watch someone who shows you how to paint, then you see how they do it, then you move your arms, you become a master painter. A champion coder, how they move their code, and how they structure their code, and then you do it as well. You become a brilliant coder. Then you become very valuable. For example, if a doctor goes and studies how to do surgery, doing a heart transplant, and they need to change your heart for the new one, artificial heart which is made of plastic for instance or it might be a heart that's from some other person that has donated then you would know how to take and cut with your knife take out the heart the one that's not working so good and then you move your arms to put a new one and the person will be so happy so what you did is you looked with your eyes and you coded knowledge you coded how you must move your arms when you do that operation so it's all to do with how you understand and how you move your arms in a robotic-like way. Now sometimes computer coders can work with robots. You can come observe with your eyes and you learn. The professors at university will show you what you must do to do that operation. So when you have the knowledge, you can move your arms and do the operation. Today we have some doctors that are controlling robots. And the robot then moves its arm and cuts instead of a real human being. Because the robot might have cameras, and the cameras look at the body. The robot then does the operation. But just like a human doctor would do, a coder, a person who knows how to make the robotic arm carry out the movements of a human being as if they were a surgeon, now the robotic arm does the same movements and does the operation. When we talk coding, we're talking about knowledge, human knowledge. Human knowledge is how you pattern and structure the way you think. You guys will become really very smart if you learn properly and you understand the knowledge of how to do something. How you code, how you take the knowledge and move your arms and legs to do something. Even a soccer player, if you had to look at a great soccer player, now I don't even know much about soccer, he moves his body in such a way that he scores many goals. Neymar, okay, so now we turn. When they see the ball, they know how to move their body in such a way that it's almost like coding. The body's moving in accordance with certain patterns. Maybe one of you will even make a robot that'll be the best soccer player, and then they won't say, they'll say, no, 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 that robot's not allowed to play any more soccer that we don't allow robots to play in teams. Maybe Man United will then buy a robot and then they win all the matches and everyone says, no more robots are allowed to play anymore against humans because robots are so good. Did you see a robot beating the world chess champion and the world's co-champion? Go is a very complicated Chinese game. The computer now beat the world champion in Go. Computers are getting smarter and smarter and smarter. They can do things and they can work out strategies. And many of you are going to learn about what's called machine learning and artificial intelligence. They start doing things they couldn't do before. That's the exciting thing about coding, that you're going to be the guys who make those systems. So look over here, 2Logo. I'm launching 2Logo. Now this is, in 2Logo, element of automation. But it's like this. Here's the movement. This is our pen moving. Many of you are already familiar with this. But if we wanted to make a circle, the code for a circle. Forward, FD, and these commands come up here. 
forward, two. Then I'm going to go left turn, and we make a slight turn. So if we go 15, left turn, 15, look, it'll only make one short little line. So if I go here, play it, look, it's a small line. But if I go and repeat that line, lots of that little pieces, look at that little piece. Lots of those little pieces together. I go with a repeat. RPT, 29, I'll go 29. The square brackets, please get to know these square brackets. When you go, repeat 29 times, forward two, left turn 15. That's the first time. Forward two, left turn 15. Then it goes the third time, forward two, left turn 15. The color green, I don't like that, so I'm going to go change the color. Look over here, here's the colors. Over there, you can see set pen color. And I can even make it a cokey pen. So I can go set pen color, blue. Explicitly write the color. Now I'm going to go and set pen size, PS, how are you man? PS stands for the size of the pen. In other words, the nib. Young engineers are calling you. They've been phoning the whole day. PS stands for pen size. So if I go like this and I make it 50, wow, it's going to be like so thick. 50, it's going to be this thick pen. Whoa, look at that. Like a thick cokey pen. I haven't ever tried 100. If I got 100, 100 is even thicker. So you can make these thick cokey pens with set pen size. Now this RPT means repeat. It's doing 29 of whatever's in brackets here. Forward two, left turn, 15. If I change this to red, I could go like that. It's got a red pen and it's making a circle, red circle. When you do programming, it's very important to encapsulate. You guys might wonder, what is that big word, encapsulate? Oh, 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 oh Mr. Bradley's trying to bewilder us. Encapsulation means your code must be stored in a procedure. Now, let me show you what that is. Encapsulation means you keep your code in a special place. I copy, and this is an easy way of copying. Three times you click your left button. One, two, three. Three click the left mouse button. If you click twice, it selects one word. Look, if I go like that. But if I go click, click, click three times, it selects everything. Now move my cursor over the blue part, right click. I choose from my menu that's come up. I look for the third one, it says copy. So I'm copying it. And now we come to the encapsulation. That's where we're going to store our code in something called a procedure. So here it goes. On the plus sign on my procedures, add procedure. Click on it. Call this circle. Circle. That's the name of my procedure. I'm highlighting it. The name is circle. Now right click in the code part here. Right click, paste. And there it says the circle code. Circle code now. Copy, I take everything away. Where's my encapsulation? Circle. Circle has got that. It means to keep your code in something. Please do talk to your mom and dad about that. It's I'm going to triple click. I'm tri clicking three times. And I'm going to take that away. I'm going to bring in circle. I'm going to just move this here. Press play. Look, it makes the first circle. If I want to change circle, I can go into my encapsulated code in the procedure circle. And I'm going to change this to blue. Not always the best way of doing it, but you can change it. You can move this object around and you could now make a blue one. So if I go like that and I bring in circle, it's now changed. I've got a blue and a red one. I wanted to show you also another thing that you can bring in this. Matthew taught this when he taught Scratch. If you guys remember that amazing lesson that Matthew taught, if you go over here, you're going to go P-U, pen up. And Matthew did show us pen up. P-U means pen up. Pen up. When I go P-U, that means it's not drawing anymore. Pen up. I'm going to move forward to. Not drawing now because the pen is up. Left turn. And I'm going to just go with 60. You can experiment. Please do. Pen down. Now it starts drawing. This is the move code. I could go like this and select everything. Oh, that shows I'm not such a good computer guy. If I triple click, 
Triple click, triple click, it selects everything. The triple click is a little bit better. Right click, from my menu, I'm gonna choose copy. And what am I gonna do now? Encapsulate my code. What am I gonna call it? This is the code that moves the pen. Andrew suggests we call it move pen or move. Much better to just call it move. So I'm gonna now call it move, move. Right click, paste. We've got move and we've also got circle. So if I go like this, I could go and start everything. I could go move circle, move circle. Instead of going move circle, move circle, move circle, I could rather just take that one away. And what do I do in front of it? Repeat. Remember repeat means I wanted to do move circle a hundred times. And what, must, what type of brackets am I using? Square brackets. So it's gonna repeat a hundred times, move circle, that's once, move circle the second time, move circle the third time, and when it gets to 99, move circle, and then one more, 100, move circle, and it stops. Because I said it must do move circle 100 times. So now I'm gonna encapsulate this code in a procedure called artwork. So look, I triple clicked, right click, copy. We're gonna use a university term. Our procedures, and we're going to encapsulate code. So we're going to put move circle, move circle. We're going to call this art. So that's going to be our picture. I need to just bring in art. Look, I type art. And art is, if I click on this little pin, it says move circle, move circle, move circle, 100 times. And let's see what it'll look like. Circle, you can see, look, it's got this in blue. And move you got that. Okay, so let's see if it, what it does. There we go. Move circle. Look, it's moving to a different one. So it's giving me a, a different changing every time. But it's a too thick. My lines are way too thick. So I'm going to start again. And I'm just going to make my artwork look a little bit better. So my circle is going to be not 100. The pen size of 100 is way too big. Let's make it 5. And I'm going to go OK. And now it should be the right size. Play it. Look, it's a little bit thinner. Move circle, move circle. And every time where the circle changes position, it's when we go to the move part of our code. And you can see it's not a really perfectly round circle. It's starting to go over some of the lines. So I need to bring in some variation. We are, what we're doing is move circle, move circle, move circle, but no color. It's pretty boring at this stage. We need to bring variation in color. Bring in a, a little bit of code that changes color. Move circle, move circle is pretty good, but in the move code, we can go like this. With a circle code, we could bring out, like over here it says, it makes the first circle. Then we're going to copy this again. Copy. And on the next line, I'm going to bring in the second one. Look. And now this one's going to be the red circle. Red. Then I'm going to copy two of them. And I go like this, and I'm going to make this one pink. I don't know if Purple Mash does pink. Well, and remember, all of this is encapsulated in the code. Like that. Copy. And look how neat that looks, because they're all underneath each other. Green. I haven't tried. Our green is the normal default color. And then we'll go orange. We've got all these different circles being made. And then I just need to bring in the move. Well, look what I'm going to do now. Move over there. I'm going to bring in the move between each one of them. Because remember, otherwise they're going to draw on top of each other. So I'm going to go move like that. And it's going to bring in the move code. All of this is encapsulated in circle. And I'm going to bring in a move over there. So look at that. Now it should bring a whole range of different colors to our circle movement. So I'm gonna just go circle. I could go art. We, we could just go art because it's gonna go move circle, move circle, move circle in art. So let's see how that works. Circle, red. Circle, pink. Matthew, look how good that is. Circle, green. Circle, orange. Circle, blue again. Now it's going red, it's going cycling through the colors. The colors again, purple, green. Perp, orange. Now it's going to go blue, and it's constantly cycling through the combination of colors that we've set it. 
It's, I don't see a beautiful pattern taking place yet, but it possibly might start looking a bit better in time as we go through it. Is it making a pattern? Okay, hopefully it'll look better. I don't know how many times it'll carry on doing this, but is it a hundred times? Okay, so we'll just see how that plays out. Please do encapsulate all your code in procedures because it's really quite amazing what you can do when you understand that. And it did revolutionize computer science when programmers started encapsulating code and putting them into to those procedures. Uh, a Andrew, who's much better with patterns, can see a pattern. To me, it looks like just one, one big mess. So you better than I am, so you probably can see that. Yeah, that just kind of looks like Okay, guys, see what you can come up with. It's really exciting. And the most important thing is not necessarily the pattern you come up with, but the encapsulation of putting your code into procedures. If you can do that, you're quite advanced. You're already on the way to becoming a brilliant programmer. And that's something I'll be so happy because one day you'll come and visit me with your helicopter and you'll come and visit me with your Lamborghini and I'm going to say, wow, I helped you to get that because you're going to be one of those guys that coders are so clever that you'll be, um, have derived great benefits out of your knowledge. And I know not all, not all of you want to get like expensive helicopters and, and, and uh, wonderful cars, but you can also help other people when you know that you can do things. You can help other people. You might do an operation with a robotic arm that just as that little piece of thing is moving over there, that little cursor, drawing the picture, you might have a robotic arm that is helping someone with brain surgery, heart surgery, or something like that with code. Or you might even become a teacher, wonderful teacher, teaching people how to use knowledge and the code, which is the knowledge in the patterns in the human brain, expresses itself that children can paint beautiful pictures, do wonderful mathematics, or maybe they even kick a soccer ball. You taught them the pattern of what it makes to be a champion. Boys and girls, thank you for listening to my lesson. It's a big thank you to everyone for watching. We would like you to subscribe and also to support what we are doing. And... We urge all learners who have not been able to fully understand what this is all about to refer back to the YouTube videos and to see if they can go over much of what we've covered and this will help you to get to understand your coding a lot better. A big thank you once again and we wish you well.